Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the origins of the intercostal arteries and intercostal nerves. And we're going to see how they, again, run underneath the ribs, which we've already talked about. Uh, but we really want to explore the big picture here. We want to understand where all these arteries come from, where the nerves come from, and any major branches that come off of them. We're going to look at three different pictures here to get a grasp of that. We're going to start here, and let's actually get a feel for what we're looking at. So again, this whole thing is just one big cross section. Um, you can clearly see ribs right here. Here's two sets of ribs on each side. And so these are the vertebrae. And these are clearly thoracic vertebrae. And the reason we know they're thoracic is because there's ribs. We don't have ribs in the lumbar region and we don't have them in the cervical region. So here is the cross section of the vertebral body. Back here, a cross section of the spinous process. Then we've got the left transverse process over here and the right transverse process over here. And then this, again, going through the vertebral canal, uh, which is created by all the vertebral foramens, this is the spinal cord. In fact, if we zoom in there, we can even see this butterfly-shaped gray matter in the center and the surrounding white matter. So that's kind of cool there. Now, again, we'll talk about the nervous system first here, and that means the intercostal nerve first. So if we look coming off of the spinal cord on each side, we have the roots, right? Um, in the back, so this is posterior because this is spinous process. This one would be the dorsal root. This one in the front would be the ventral root or anterior root. Uh, notice that th we can also tell this one in the back is the dorsal or posterior root because it has this engorgement right here, which is, of course, the dorsal or posterior root ganglion. But in any case, notice that the dorsal root and the ventral root fuse into a spinal nerve, which is very short-lived. It's literally just right here. Very short-lived because it's going to diverge very quickly into a, a dorsal ramus, which is a little bit smaller right here, and then a ventral ramus right here. Um, remember, coming off of the spinal cord, we have the roots, we have the spinal nerve, and then the rami. This one going back here would be the dorsal ramus. You can see the dorsal ramus right here on the other side, um, and it's really just going into the posterior compartment here of the back, and it supplies muscles of the back and then other tissues in there as well. You can see that it's going to continue out up here to the uh, superficial area, and it's going to provide cutaneous uh, sensory information uh, from the skin and transmit it back to the central nervous system. Uh, we're not really so much focused here on the dorsal uh, ramus because the intercostal nerves are coming from the ventral ramus. So to really see that, let's take a look at the patient's right side over here. So here is the ventral ramus right here. Okay. Um, you can see a couple things here. You can see that it provides rami communicantes, which go to the sympathetic chain ganglion. Uh, here's one sympathetic chain ganglion. Here's another one, and the whole thing up the uh, spinal column would give you the sympathetic chain. But here's the ventral ramus, and it's really just going to become the intercostal nerve. So this right here is an intercostal nerve. For most of the regions of the spinal cord, the ventral rami that come off are going to form plexuses. So we have a cervical plexus, C1 to C4. We have a brachial plexus, C5 to T1. And then, of course, we have a lumbosacral plexus and all that. But in the thoracic region, we don't form plexuses. Instead, we have intercostal nerves. And so the ventral rami really just become those intercostal nerves. So here's one at this level right here, and then here's one at the level below. I'm going to focus on the ones at this level below here because they're going to illustrate something interesting uh, that we need to understand. And for that, I'm going to go back to this side over here. Let's take a look at this rib right here. Okay? Remember, on the inferior surface of each rib, we have a costal groove. And this intercostal nerve right here, along with the intercostal artery that we're going to talk about, they travel in that costal groove. Now, here, um, they're a little bit inferior to that costal groove. That's really just for the, for the artist, uh, so you can actually see them. But they'd really be tucked away more or less in that costal groove. And then both of these structures, intercostal artery and the vein, which is not shown, and the intercostal nerve, they're going to penetrate through this connective tissue right here, this is actually an aponeurosis or aponeurosis of the intercostal muscles, and they're actually going to travel between two of them. 
Let's come over here and look at this because we can get a better view of this. It's actually labeled. There's three sets of intercostal muscles. Okay, The superficial one is the external intercostal muscle. Okay? Directly deep to that, we have the internal intercostal muscle. And then even deep to that, we have the innermost intercostal muscle. I didn't learn that until much later. So most classes don't even talk about this one, but it's the deepest. If you actually look between the innermost intercostal and the internal, notice that the intercostal nerve actually runs between those. So right here again, here's our innermost, here's our internal, here's external, but between internal and innermost, this is where we have the intercostal nerve and the intercostal vessels, artery and vein. So I just wanted to make that perfectly clear that actually, both the intercostal nerve and vessels penetrate through this aponeurosis right here, this connective tissue, and they run between the internal and innermost intercostal muscles within the costal groove as they traverse around uh, anteriorly um, so that they can get um, all the way around the thoracic cavity. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. So let's now take a look at the specific of course of the intercostal nerve. We'll look at this top one right here for that. Um, again, it's we have the uh, artery emitted, but here's our intercostal nerve. Penetrates through the aponeurosis right here, and you can see that it traverses between the innermost layer of the intercostals and the internal. And we follow it around right here, and we can see that it diverges into two branches that initially kind of run together. One of them's a little bit deeper, the other's more superficial. And when we get to this region right here, they separate. The layer that's more superficial, or I should say the, the branch that's more superficial, actually runs out to the skin. And you can see once it gets out here, it sends a branch posteriorly and sends a branch anteriorly or ventrally. This branch right here from the intercostal nerve is the lateral cutaneous branch of the intercostal nerve. That makes sense because it's penetrating out laterally and it's cutaneous. So it's providing sensory information from the skin out laterally. And then it sends that information back through the intercostal nerve to the spinal cord, to the central nervous system. The branch that stays deeper, we continue that around. Um, this is really just the intercostal nerve. Okay, We follow it around. And when it gets right around here, it's going to change names. Okay, so intercostal nerve comes around here, and really once it gets to this region right here, it changes names to the anterior cutaneous branch of the intercostal nerve, or ventral cutaneous branch. Because notice what it's doing, it's coming out here and again superficially and providing cutaneous information from the skin and relaying it back to the central nervous system in the same way that the lateral cutaneous branch did over here. So hopefully that makes sense. Now. That pretty much right there covers uh, the nervous part of this, and the origins and the branches of the intercostal nerve. The one thing to notice about the intercostal nerve is it really only has one origin. It's from the spinal cord, which makes sense. Okay? There's nothing anteriorly uh, from which the uh, intercostal nerve can originate. The reason I mention that is because the intercostal arteries are a little bit different. They have two origins, and that means we're going to have a posterior intercostal artery and an anterior intercostal artery. So let's first start with the posterior, and I'm going to go ahead and mention this, that the posterior intercostal artery is longer and bigger. They originate from the aorta. This is the thoracic aorta. Notice that the aorta is actually a little bit left of the midline. If we had a sagittal plane, it's a little bit left of that. Just something important to remember. So here's our aorta. Off of it, we see posterior intercostal arteries. This is for the level above right here. This one is for the next level below. But there's, there's one coming out on each side. And if we look right here, we can actually see the posterior intercostal artery that's running with the intercostal nerve. And they run together in that costal groove. They penetrate through this aponeurosis. And again, they run between the internal and innermost intercostal muscles. I think we beat that to death. But notice that this posterior intercostal artery, if we look at the one above, we can see it better. It just goes around just like we saw before for the nerve. And something else similar happens. Again, notice here we have a lateral cutaneous branch. In the same way that the nervous part had a lateral cutaneous branch. Um, it's emitted on this side, but we would have that same blood vessel over here. Okay, So 
we would also have the nervous lateral cutaneous branch of the intercostal nerve on this side. Again, things are omitted just for simplicity, but they're bilateral. So this is the lateral cutaneous branch of the inter posterior intercostal artery. And again, it follows around anteriorly. Now, somewhere in this region right here, um, the posterior intercostal artery is going to anastomose with the anterior intercostal artery. Where does that come from? Well, it would have to come from an anterior source, and it turns out it's going to be either the left or the right internal thoracic artery. The internal thoracic artery is an artery that really ultimately comes from the subclavian artery and descends down the anterior thoracic wall. And if we look here, it's really descending between the, the intercostal muscles right here and this muscle, which is called uh, the transversus thoracis muscle, which is an anterior wall muscle on the thorax. Okay? Um, it's actually involved in respiration, and we'll be covering that fairly soon. But notice that the internal thoracic artery is descending down. And as it descends down, it gives off anterior intercostal arteries. So for example, right here, this is an anterior intercostal artery and it's going to move around the thorax and uh, posteriorly because it originates anteriorly moves posteriorly and then approximately right here it's going to anastomose with the posterior intercostal artery and they sort of form one unit there okay so that's important to understand the intercostal artery is really two of them it's a posterior one coming from the aorta and then there's an anterior one originating from the internal thoracic artery. But somewhere in this region, they anastomose and form one continuous unit. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's actually get a better grasp of this by looking at some of these other pictures right here. So again, here we have a one thoracic level. Here's a rib. So we know that these are thoracic vertebrae. Um, here's the spinous process jutting down inferiorly. Um, we can also tell it's thoracic because if it were lumbar, these would be going back a little more uh, just posteriorly, not as much inferiorly. And also the transverse processes project backwards at about 45 degrees from the spinous process. These are clearly thoracic vertebrae. Um, this is really looking more at the arterial system. But again, look, if we look at this uh, top one right here, this is a posterior intercostal artery. Okay, it's coming around here. We can follow it around. This right here is where it gives off that lateral cutaneous branch that goes to supply the skin region. And then approximately right here would be where it anastomoses with the anterior intercostal artery. These would be the internal thoracic arteries, also called internal mammary arteries because they tend to supply the breast in both males and females. So here's the anterior intercostal artery, and then they're going to anastomose with each other. And then notice over here that the posterior intercostal artery is also going to give off some dorsal branches. This over here should actually say dorsal cutaneous branch, but this is going to provide some blood supply to the skin of the back. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, now let's take a look at this picture. This is an actual full cross section. This is, this is what you might see um, more similar to an MRI or something like that. Um, so when you're looking at something like this that is a complete cross section, not like this, where it has some perspective. This is an artist's drawing. This is really more of a true cross section. So it may look like the thoracic aorta is on the right side here, but remember for a cross section we view from the bottom, inferiorly to superiorly. So we have to flip it. So technically this is the patient's left side over here. This is the right. Okay. Let's begin by looking at the nervous part. So here's the spinal cord. Here's a ventral root. Here's the posterior or dorsal root with the dorsal root ganglion. They fuse to form a spinal nerve and then quickly diverge into a dorsal ramus, which goes to serve structures of the back, particularly the muscle. And then here's the ventral ramus, which continues on really as the intercostal nerve. Okay, you can see here the intercostal nerve is going to traverse around and it's going to go all the way over here where it will terminate as the ventral cutaneous branch. So again, it's coming from the ventral ramus. So ventral cutaneous branch out here. But notice about halfway across the, um, the distance of the thorax, it's going to give off that lateral cutaneous branch, which again itself has one half that goes anteriorly, another half that goes posteriorly, and this provides sensory information from the skin region back to the nervous system. Now let's talk about the blood supply. 
here's the thoracic aorta. It's descending out of the screen toward you. So you're looking really just at um, the inside of the blood vessel right here. Same thing goes for these two over here. Here's our internal thoracic arteries. This would be the left internal thoracic artery. Over here, right internal thoracic or internal mammary artery. If we follow from the thoracic aorta, we have a left posterior intercostal artery and a right posterior intercostal artery. And notice that, again, um, this is also going to give off a dorsal cutaneous branch to give blood supply to the skin in this area and some of the muscles that are in there, such as multifidus and erector spiny. Okay? If we follow posterior intercostal artery around, again, it's going to go in that costal groove with the intercostal nerve. Um, it's going to go between the innermost and internal intercostal muscles. And then over here, about halfway uh, across the thorax, it's going to give off that lateral cutaneous branch to give blood supply to the superficial structures like the skin. And then it's going to continue on, and it's going to eventually anastomose with the anterior intercostal artery, which actually should be pointing right here. So I apologize for that. Let me actually move this around. Here's our internal thoracic artery. And then here's our anterior intercostal artery. And again, this structure right here is meant to show that anastomosis. Okay? So all this over here is posterior intercostal artery. And then we have a very short anterior intercostal artery coming off of the internal mammary artery. Okay? Um, again, this may be exaggerated a little bit, but the point is, is the anterior intercostal artery, which comes from the internal thoracic artery, is much shorter than the very long inter, uh, posterior intercostal artery. But you can see that the posterior intercostal artery gives off that lateral cutaneous branch before the anastomosis, which occurs in the anterior half of the thorax. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the intercostal arteries and the intercostal nerves. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.